Okay, so I'm getting the evil eye. Wait, calls me in order. Uh, on Thursday, January 9th, the first meeting of the new year. Welcome, everyone. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy, Happy New, um, new Year. This is a meeting of the, the Council on Aging Board of Directors. Why don't we do a quick round of introductions and then we'll jump right in. I'm J.D. Miller. I'm the, the board chair. Linda Hayes, Director of the Council on Aging. Janice Desmond, co-chair. Maude Mills, board member. Joan Powell liaison for South Shore Elderly Services. Susan Kelly, member. Karen Canfield, liaison to Board of Selectmen. Leslie James, board member. Welcome again, everyone. Um, so we were just talking off air on minutes. Yeah. So what it doesn't take a minute, a minute to review minutes. So from December. <laughs> Do I have a second? Says the secretary. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> but I, and I, uh, just in terms of that's what I mentioned, so I will file the December minutes along with my director's report from December on the website. Um, well, so we had your director's report. So. Yes. Yeah. So you so always we'll, get it, but we don't electronically yeah. file. We only electronically file the minutes. Okay. But since it's mentioned there, it's okay. so now I'm, I'm including my report, which doesn't matter. Okay. It's easy enough. So. Well, there's an easy segue to. <laughs> me? Well, your we current could, we could, um, we could move the camera. Oh, I, I bet you, you, so you got to you you head out? Um, I, I, I apologize. There's a planning board meeting tonight okay. that we need to attend. You have to get somewhere by 7? Well, it starts at 7, so yeah. I, I wander over there. Yeah. Around that time, I'll be there. <laughs> well, well, let's, um, yeah. we'll, we'll get you out of here. Okay. Uh, what's going on with the BOS and or anything else you want to add? Anything you want to add here? Well, I really we'll like, well, we're obviously we're in the middle of doing the budgets for fiscal 21. 21? Yes, mm. 21. Just seems weird saying that. Um, so that is, is the, um, that in preparation for the annual town meeting, which is coming up on April 13th. 13th. Thank you. Um, are really consuming 
us right now. We have three major uh, staff positions that will be filled this mm -hmm. year. No. Um, yeah. We, um, for those who haven't heard, our director of planning and development has moved on mm -hmm. to I another position. We were lucky today. to have him as long as we did. Yes, yeah, so and um, so our right. police chief will be retiring. And our, Who will be? at the, um, I believe it's July 1st, at the end of the fiscal year. Who? Uh, Mike Stewart. He's Mike retired. Stewart. He's retired. Oh, okay. And our superintendent of schools yeah. is retired. Wow. <laughs> this is so so we're going to be a little busy yeah. with those things. Yeah, I thought I heard the principal. Was a yeah, Rob I Martin did hear that. Going. I have not heard it officially. So. <laughs> uh, I heard it in the Mariner. He's going to Weymouth. Oh, was it in the Mariner? Yeah. Uh, that was superintendent. Oh, that was the. Uh, no, but Wargo's going to Weymouth someplace. Yeah. So couple, quite a lot of things. Oh, Janice right. is going to have yeah. her hands full too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's chair of the school committee right now. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's that sort of town business. Yeah. Um, we're moving forward with um, a bunch of committees that and there's mm -hmm. there's more to report. I'll tell you. But um, I did want to ask how we're right at the at the starting line on the heavy lifting for construction. So I wanted to just get feedback on how. We have, well, yeah. yeah, I know. I saw the notes and everything, but um, it's it it's it's a minutia mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. um, and the other projects really. that we've done in town, mm -hmm. um, obviously, the director of whatever mm -hmm. department is is usually at. Are you going to the end of the weekly meetings? Mm -hmm. um, but I was wondering, is somebody designated and um, able to attend? Frequently with that, or to help in that. JD came as well. Okay. Well, yeah, we had a pre-construction meeting last Friday. Pre-pre, yeah. Pre-pre, yeah. pre -pre. it was. Yeah. So preliminary pre, but but that's it was a lot that, of detail. And I haven't I seen any notes or minutes that. from that meeting. Uh, I don't know anything that's been um, scheduled. Rachel since. just sent no, the minutes this afternoon. But as we start that process, um, it it um, I really think it's important, and I know you know this. Right? I think it's really important that the advocates who will benefit from the project have their fingers in the pie the whole time. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if they say, oh, yeah, we can, you know, we need to cut a budget here, we'll do this, and you'll go, no, wait, 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 that affects this. Mm -hmm. They don't have that knowledge, they have construction knowledge. Mm -hmm. So having the, and I know, you know, Linda's going to have a very full plate in the next 12 months. So I just mm -hmm. want to, you know, encourage this mm -hmm. group to make mm -hmm. sure that. Mm -hmm. We're backstopping and mm -hmm. attending. I'm going to try to attend as many of the PDCs as I can, mm -hmm. um, because we, you know, obviously mm -hmm. we all want this to be done mm -hmm. right, and mm -hmm. it has to be on budget. So, mm -hmm. so does that mean that, that different members of the board should try to go too, or how does that? Construction that's not very advisable, only because you won't you you'll have more questions mm -hmm. than yeah, answers. Yeah. Oh, that useful. But you know, to think about ways to keep you guys. I mean, obviously you're going to inform them every meeting, yeah. right? Um, I mean, maybe at different know. phases there would be maybe supplemental meetings that maybe um, we would be other more of a, a constituency. You know, yeah, I'd just be mindful of it as you go through it. You'll know mm -hmm. as things go along. I mean, the beginning yeah. is just going to be right. you know, mm -hmm. nuts and bolts, and it really won't require. It. But toward the end, right. when you're oh gosh, yeah, yeah, is going to need a lot of hands. Mm -hmm. So don't abandon Linda. I guess is the message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope I can keep everything yeah. informed. Um, it's a new language. It's funny how they throw around all those acronyms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to have yeah. incredible education, I will tell you. But the OPM will handle the language piece and all of that. They'll translate that. We do very well with with him, with yes. them, and with him. But we're very fortunate right now to have him. It's good. Um, are there any questions yeah. I can answer about? Well, I don't I feel know. like we're on the edge of the pool about to jump can in. Can you answer? Yeah. Can you talk at all about you know the lawsuit that was filed? All I can say is it's it's running its court. I mean, it's it's in the courts, and I mean I don't know it really any more than you do that um, it will it'll it'll go through the process. And right now, I don't think anything has. I honestly don't even know where it is in the in the process because mm -hmm. it's a long one. I didn't know if they pulled it or I mean you were able to decide as select men that we could move forward despite that having been filed. But I didn't know if that had dissuaded them or. If I don't know. I don't know. If I didn't know, I wouldn't get liberty to talk about it because it's it's mm -hmm. under it's still in the courts. We might find out more tonight. Oh, okay. yeah. This is true. <laughs> um, there are there are still uh, 
some of the zoning requirements, what came out of the planning board meeting back in September, I guess. And the stipulations really still need to be followed by, by the new contractor um, as well as the architect. So that's, that's still something that's happening at, like, at the beginning. It's not as fast as you would think. Yeah, they'll just make sure that the boxes get checked. But the boxes and are there's supposed to be a meeting, a, a pre-construction meeting yes. with the planning board, yes. which is I don't think that's been yet. scheduled. Yeah. Yeah. And as part of the construction, taking down that way. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's That'll be the first step. Oh, yeah. yeah that's I'll, I'll the first step. They can obey it and then knock it down. Mm -hmm. So that's the um, One thing I, I did, I've mentioned this before, is um, if this board wants to give some thought to doing an official groundbreaking, mm -hmm. um, this would be the group that would mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. figure it out. And, Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we don't know when. Yeah. Yeah. And it can happen any yeah. time. Well, we okay. think it would be a good idea, we just don't know. Sort of the ceremonial yeah. groundbreaking, it's, I'm saying. It's right ceremonial, now. and so I, I, it social, really can happen any time. Yeah, and I mean, the social chamber of Congress, they might, you know, be willing to get involved too, because they do a lot of those kind of groundbreaking ribbon cutting kinds of things. I mean the officials and yeah, yeah the town administrator's office uh, we've done luck you know fortunately we've done a bunch of them in the last mm -hmm. five years mm -hmm. they can yeah. Just, yeah, Michelle and in, in, in Mr. DeGro's offices can be very useful in just the logistics of that politicians usually yeah. like to come yeah uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that. oh, oh no no I yeah. it's 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 a but it's a good opportunity to keep it in their minds when well, so it, it can go in the mariner as well. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. More news, more news. Well, as part yeah. of the meeting, you know, the, the sign came up, and there have been some questions anyway about what could be on a sign. And basically, there is a standard sign. It's a four by eight sign. On that sign needs to go who's involved. So, so the town of Situate, the new contractor, Vertex, the architect, yeah. and what's the, and what's the project. The contractor does that. Yeah. And you guys will well, I just asked for a little input in yeah. terms of the title, just so that what's being represented is, you know, something that everybody can get excited about and feels sure. represents yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and we should probably talk about that. Yeah, that's what and I quickly had that in my head before mm -hmm. the sign starts. So mm -hmm. Like choir year input. They did say yes. And the people doing fundraising were that would generate some no, sort of, you know, awareness and we, we want that we want that on the fence mm -hmm. on a construction fence on first parish road. The, so, uh, you so know everybody that drives by says so future home. Oh yeah, off. that came up in the meeting, so I was just mentioning. Yeah, that. of course. That's good for all of the other reasons. Yeah. Okay. Good. Do you want me to go? Sure. Okay. Hop in. Um. So I'll come back to, I'll circle back to that at the end of my report, the meeting itself, but because um, you've read the minutes, you're okay with that. Um, I did, as I've spoken about at the last few meetings, I attended on December 18th the GAFTA advisory board meeting, as I always do, but in this case it was to recommend the new hire for the executive director position that we've been interviewing for for six months. So um, that's done. So he begins the end of this month on January 20th. But Frank Gay will continue to be available and even work for a couple of months, if not more, alongside or with him or part time, so we won't lose him altogether. Um, and you know, the timing's interesting because we um, are now sort of we've been thrust into this role of having to work with Social Community Action Council, who has provided our out of town medical transportation actually since 2002, which I did not know. And there's a lot of history that I did not know. And suddenly, you know, once in 2013, they raised rates a bit um, for the service that we contract through them and provide to our situate resident clients over 60. Well, suddenly they doubled the rates, like with no warning. And um, the cost, everything that we do for out-of-town medical comes out of our transportation budget, yeah. which, is, which is supplied by GATRA, or the state. Um, the MBTA assessments, and anyway, but you know it's finite, so um, so we're worried, and now we're in some discussion with them about maybe how things could not hurt so much and not be so quick. 
So he's given us a bit of a staggered um, increased schedule for now. But I think I wanted to ask Kathy to come to our next meeting and maybe get some more input from you if I'm able to lay out what's going on with transportation all together and have a discussion really on what you think, because it could be a complete paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. We've been offering virtually almost free transportation. I mean, we asked for $10, and it used to just be a discretionary donation until a couple of years ago. We just, yeah, so it was just a little arbitrary because right. a trip could be $35, a trip could be $95, but we would just ask for 10 because that would sort of round out. But now we may either have to ask for a lot more um, or, or just have a different sort of intake and not guarantee that this is something that can be available to just anyone. So just sort of laying the groundwork to maybe get your input in as the board. You know, I might need a little guidance on, you know, what should we be doing? Because we're going to have to disappoint a lot of people um, coming up. Can we do a special rate for people who are, you know, low income or known to be If not income? only, you know, at yeah. least, but, well, there's no special rate. You know, the rate is what we're paying, but the suggestion could be we actually do it for lower income and not sort of run that by intake. Mm -hmm. and really see right. what the need Screen. is and then kind of base it on that. Where or the other people could pay or more they could, right. yeah. if they wanted yeah. to because they may well, not be able yeah. to drive or something. Yeah. We have a, a single ride who's been using us for seven years to get to Weymouth. And um, anyway, the cost has been exorbitant over seven years. It's twenty five over $25,000. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously... You mean the cost is something charged by us yes. to us and, and paid through our budget. Just something that has to be, I guess, you know, when other towns do it differently, we apparently are unique and received special consideration in the beginning because, turns out, I didn't know Social Community Action Council had started in situated before they moved to Plymouth. That I did not know either. And, and it just meant they had a bit of a relationship with the earlier administration and it was kind of all worked out from that vantage point then. Anyway, so changes are in the, are in the office. So I had a great month, it seemed, in one week um, with our three centenarian visits, which really was awesome. It was awesome. And Karen would tell you the same thing. So Karen Conley came with, with myself or met us there. Um, Jill came to one with me, and Jenny came to a couple of the others. Um, the centenarians, over 100, the three that we were meeting at their residences, and they all were unique and, and just special and wonderful and just inspiring. It was really a nice experience. So I thank, really, the Selectman's Office, Lorraine and Devin, who sort of resurrected this program. And there is the cane and the plaque mm -hmm. on our wall currently. Okay. I didn't notice that. <clears throat> Good. That's great. And they were given representative lapel pins That's for great. the Boston Cane um, program. <laughs> and then, as well, the proclamation itself, which was read by Karen and was read by me here to, <laughs> to the niece of Barbara Gills because she had in the meantime passed away, but she was a special lady that we did know, so they came to our Christmas luncheon. Anyway, that was fabulous. Um, that really, Lorraine Devlin mm -hmm. really gets credit for remembering and doing the like work to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Karen told us about it on the so it was wonderful. <laughs> It was really nice. And I mean, it's all different, like I said. You know, one woman, she still lives in her, you know, fairly big home, which was pristine, beautiful, lovely, you know. And then another lives at um, the Central Park. But, um, you know, her family's there, people from Shaw's came <laughs> because they love her so much because she's been driving there at 102 <laughs> until August. Oh, and God. then the other um, is that cardigan, and her family's there all the time, every day, and they they were just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So anyway, all three nice. very different nice. unique. That's the kind of thing, just, you know, <coughs> looking ahead with, let's say, the website, or even a Facebook page, where it would have been really great to turn that into a podcast mm. to promote the Senior Center. It, and, yes. and also maybe it, it just to a, let the rest of the yeah. town hear their stories. Right. Well, it, the Mariner did come to the luncheon, so we did get it into there. Yeah, I um, saw the article, but we that's probably not the same as, like, but you know, it was, hearing the It was the town of Citroën, but true. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we, just we can try idea. to get a little bit out there. Yeah. Use it. Um, mm -hmm. True. 
Um, I did also want to mention, and didn't put it in my report, so it's just another bullet item, that um, Rocco's Barbershop, nicely enough, and I hadn't heard about it even at the beginning or directly, but they sponsored a gingerbread house um, fundraiser, which they decided they would give to us or have the donations go to us for our programming. And um, so I ran over and picked up the cash. <laughs> They're lovely. I guess Sal Graceffa, Grisef I know his name, I just know I forget it. But he's a baker anyway, so he does this every year and started it with his kids, and they have given it you know, to others. So this was this year. So it was really nice. So I did put that on Facebook and had to tag them so mm -hmm. that they got recognized at Citrus mm -hmm. Monthly and all that. That was nice. Uh, we have a new volunteer. Um, candidate or um, someone who has thrown their hat in the ring to become a new shine counselor which is really good That's news great. and in fact she would have been here tonight but she was not feeling well Elaine Shambari so that's what she said okay yes. well, well, <laughs> shine is serving the health information needs of everyone and is a state provided program um, okay where volunteers are trained, so that's the cost, and there is a director who does that. So from February to May, I think she goes weekly, she has to miss a couple, so we're just waiting for sort of the approval that, yes, yeah, she's, she's a good candidate. Um, and then they are asked to fill a certain requirement as to so many hours with us in counseling people on their insurance. Okay. Yeah, how to help people navigate. The or Medicaid. Yeah, Medicaid, yeah, yeah, Medicaid, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole complex thing. Yeah, it is better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and anything else really that's out there, but that's the main. Yeah. So we lost our, our longtime volunteer um, earlier this fall, and we have another, but he's not able to give a lot of hours, so we know with a second, at least a second. If anybody else steps up, we'd send them to. Yeah. Um, that's great. So, and actually on another note too, so I've been leading the memory training for the last year more or less and um, I've just finished one and I'm doing another one coming up in a week or so. But I also have another volunteer who will join me in March doing that and that is Janice Tesman. Very good. So, um, <laughs> we um, are working together on that so it's nice that we'll have sort of a co-partnership on the memory training. For at least the next the year. So. Too, I'm sorry. You're going to pick up the Tai Chi too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, anyone would be welcome on that. I've actually been in talks. But you know what? It's the nicest hour of my week, so I'm just giving it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take anybody who wants to come. But, but that is true. I mean, I've continued to do that. I do the memory training. I have participated in the ukulele lessons, which I pay for and is a benefit to me. But I will say it, it's also nice that I'm there and doing that and we practice, you know, so it, so we're working on it becoming really a group that meets regularly and does their thing, it doesn't just have to be about the lesson, so that's, that's actually been very nice. And then on that note, I do try to distribute sort of staff involvement in things when we can, I mean, Lisa's activities coordinator anyway, so of course she does it naturally as part of her job for some things, but she's been trained in the healthy eating evidence-based program, she's done the Nordic pole walking, so she does that instruction. She and I both do Aging Mastery together. Jill was trained and did laughter yoga for a while. We just suspended it because we really weren't getting the interest, but we might go back because it's a very great thing. And Jenny does the Job Seekers Networking Group, which really has become fairly time consuming for her. Two times a month, but there's a fair amount of paperwork, which is in her report, and um, data entry and follow-up and whatnot. And also, I, I think, as, as I've hoped, some client work has come out of it. At least people are now more aware of what might be available through the senior center that okay. are maybe not employed at the moment and it can be a help. So that was, that's a good thing. About how many people are in, uh, looking for jobs to um, They run, let's say they could run maybe only 12 people at a meeting or they have had as many as 35 or 40 people at a meeting. So it does yeah, vary. And they do come from outside the borders, but I did bring there was uh, a report that showed we had almost one of the highest. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, I did a mid-year metrics report for the 17 locations, and I will say that Situate is one of the strongest host mm -hmm. sites that we have this year. Mm -hmm. So Great. hats off to yeah to Deb and, and yeah, to uh, Debbie Raymond, who's the group leader for that, as well as mm -hmm. Jenny. It's the second year, but it's also so you know whenever you're yeah. doing something. Mm -hmm. Get that momentum going of, of knowing how to market and so forth. But they have one of the highest attendance rates. Okay. 
and although Marshfield started doing it this year as well, otherwise we were really the only one yeah. in a mm -hmm. fair, mm -hmm. fairly wide yeah. circumference. So um, that could be part of it, but they do come from elsewhere, not just Situate, mm -hmm. even though there's a fair number from Situate. Mm -hmm. um, so also we did get some funding or at least um, some training on January 15th coming up next week to actually develop a new website for us through the MCOA website, so we'll actually be able to start to develop and work on our own rep, you know, presentation, I guess, somewhat, and see how that goes. We can always move beyond that if it's really working right now. The only one we have is is the town website and the Council on Aging page, which is still a little convoluted to get to for people. Um, so that should be great, and Susan's going to help with that as well, so another volunteer um, stepping up for that, and Jill, I think, will have trained. And we have another volunteer who's a graphic artist who does some work that I'm going to and myself. Mm -hmm. So lots of, thank you, Karen. I apologize for leaving. Oh, no problem. Say hi. for being here. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll throw in, there's always students that might have. Mm -hmm. So yep. got to yeah. sort of approach them, define it. Yeah. I do think that could go really well. I mean, the high school. Yeah. 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 They, they need to do community service mm -hmm. as well. Yep. So it could also yeah. be that for them. Yeah. We have a young person who just came to us yesterday who will come, start to come once a week. But um, the Interact Club, that uh, the young Rotarian group that JT works with, um, although the things have fallen off a little bit. <laughs> so well, we for Megan. Effective yesterday, right? Yes, and only Megan has come the last two months. Okay. So that's a little bit of a problem. And how many people were here looking for her house? Six. No, that's Need a lot of people for one person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know it's, it's a little inconsistent, but still, it's, that's not quite. I thought we had usually had lots of We did. So I don't know if it's their down. interest or maybe not yeah. connecting quite as much or just making it more worth their while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. Well, I mean, Megan, she obviously knows about it, so she, she and I communicate. Uh, we are offering, so we tried it last year, and we're going to try it again, maybe with a little bit more marketing, but Super Tuesday, so in other words, once a month, the third Tuesday, it so happens, we're cooking up a, a, a lunch, soup, sandwich, offering that for people to come in to Stella Cut and sit and have lunch. Um, so I hope it does a little bit better. We have a Mahjong group on Tuesdays. So luckily, that's a fairly good-sized group, and they would stay for lunch. So we were feeding someone, and maybe a couple of people would come that had read it in the newsletter. But it's something I will try to Tuesdays was at um, lunch with the first Trinitarian. Tuesday is the only day of the week that there is no lunch okay. in situate. So Monday, oh. Wednesday, Friday is the social elder services lunch up at the Methodist Church, okay. and Thursday is the congregational church. Okay. Mm. Okay. So that's why we targeted Tuesdays. Okay. Um, I might, I believe, I mentioned this last month at the Veterans Advisory Council. We are holding a breakfast here on February 26th um, for no charge for veterans and with the Veterans Advisory Council to speak to them and, and maybe garner some input from them as to what they might like them to do as a, as a group committee. But also be nice for us to sort of connect and, and have them here too. So you got Kim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Joe Kelly? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's, it's a good sized committee now, actually. I went to one meeting um, in December, I believe. Early December. And uh, however, I did, we did breakfast today, and we've done it before, of course. And we do have a great volunteer in Maureen Ginsburg. She just happened to be away until this morning. So it was just saying, it's not easy to do. Breakfast is hard anyway. Something that really has to come out in the kitchen and the stove or the oven, I should say. It's not an easy task. So I, I, I might have that catered and I might pay for it. <laughs> so we'll see. Do you know what I mean? It, it was it was a big undertaking. Today's program was awesome. It really was. And it's a two week. So the woman that's coming and whose father was in the um, the 10th Mountain Division in World War II, skiing soldiers. So she presented a bit of an introduction um, of information and then, in fact, showed um, the Warren Miller Climb to Glory film, which was about 45 minutes, which was very well done, very entertaining. 
very informative. You know, the footage, the, the scenes, the skiing scenes were great. So that was this week, and now next week she's coming back. And still there's more to tell about their participation in the war effort and, and how they were used, really, as soldiers, but also a little bit more graphic and gruesome because it's more battle warfare-oriented. Um, but anyway, so uh, we had close to 50 people, about 40. 26 people that's, here, which was a, a lot to feed and keep the coffee coming. And it was, that's a we just problem. don't have the facility. Yeah. Really. So, um, mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, for this Veterans Park Fest, we have it's on Wednesday, so I have to work. But, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I do the disability exams for the veterans. That's yeah. all I do. I saw them in special division uh, mm -hmm. for their claims. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, We've noticed that a lot of people are really underserved, so they don't know, especially the older veterans, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Vietnam vets don't put in any claims, mm -hmm. or they don't know that. Uh, that so there are several um, there are several conditions that are automatic yes mm -hmm. uh, for anybody who was in Vietnam. And the most important is the coronary artery disease, so they had a stroke or heart attack, and second is diabetes, which is very common, and third mm -hmm. is uh, prostate cancer, and so so a lot of these people have that. All they have to do is put in a claim. So maybe I can talk to the vet, vet that's going to come here and explain that a little bit more to him. Uh, that it should be encouraged, mm -hmm. uh, right. especially with that. Uh, we also do a lot of exams on people in their 90s mm -hmm. and 100 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> We even do catastrophic exams, we call that, so somebody who is um, already in hospice, we go over there, and um, the reason why we do that is because we, we push the service connection through really fast, like in a day, mm -hmm. because if the veteran dies of a service connection, then the widow gets a pension. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know that either. A lot of people are very old, so are like, why would I do this? Right. Uh, and and, and um, it's you know it's well, money and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah for sure. Uh, well, so maybe I'll talk to him and give him a bit we more. We can certainly put you through to well, James Stewart and Joe Cowley. Who well, is that? Who, who? They're the people that head up the. the I can give you a list of. Them. Yeah. But also, mm -hmm. we do have a veterans agent in the town. Of I know. So we, I know. That's what. Um, so I'm talking from the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, he's. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we actually do the exams. So. So it would be interesting for me to talk to them because we try as much as we can to talk to the vet reps as well. Well, maybe you'd be willing if maybe with some notice to, to go to one of their meetings and talk with the committee. Yes. You know, okay. give them a little bit more information. Not on or um, okay. when the, I went to the meeting, you know, we talked about having not this one because they're sort of presenting themselves and their their objectives. Right. But maybe another meeting, a guest speaker, and, and maybe that would be a good meeting for you. Yeah. So, so you could talk, or could tell me, or I could tell them um, when you might be available to do that. Yes. So only on Thursday. <laughs> or in the weekend. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. All right. I know that they know mm -hmm. some of it, but we are the ones who are actually do the mm -hmm. So um, we see a very different. Uh, we also notice a lot of things that they could apply yeah. for that mm -hmm. they don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that'll come up yeah. again in Jenny's outreach report, actually. Yeah. Okay, well, the only other thing, well, a couple things I guess I mentioned um, in my report, but again, as Karen mentioned, I was at the pre-pre-construction -con -pre meeting. There's another one tomorrow morning, so there are intended to be weekly meetings that I get to go to, J.D. also. Um, I didn't have it down. I didn't know it was weekly. Yes. Um, and then moving forward, I mean, the idea that maybe we'll, we'll have some sort of an overview committee, I don't really know. They haven't suggested that that needs to be the case yet. Um, we've done okay so far with the PBC, who really hears all of the progress and makes decisions, you know, based on any input we might have from as users, so to speak, and then also from their perspective. Um, but anyway, so it was a lot of um, preliminary prep discussion and also meeting and greeting and finding out who the players were, who's going to be on site, who does this, who does that. They're meeting each other, all of them, for the first first time. Lines of communication is important. Quarries. So, honestly, it is 
a huge undertaking. Um, there's been some discussion by email this week, so they're trying to streamline it and um, trying to have recreation who is doing it, who is really the reason the quarries need to be done, but because the community is still utilizing the area and the space and the construction workers will be there. So, <coughs> so just all of the workers on site need to yeah. be quarried. And then the concern is, well, what if one's sick and you send someone else to replace right. them and they haven't been quarried, how do we deal with that? Right. So basically it's almost on site as instantly as it can yeah. be done. So anyway, that was a big discussion. Um, the permitting requirements, you know, the fencing layout, they were going to walk the site and see how they could fence in everything for safety, but also still allow the access and egress that the recreation department and the community needs to the gym and their building. Um, so let me ask you, given what's going on with <coughs> abutters, are they included, on, are they attending these? Well, they came up a lot, so they're being, they they will be communicated with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure through whom I did offer. You know, it, it sort of, I guess it just depends on what's happening, but um, mm -hmm. certainly they were mentioned and they will be considered. Um, so for instance, hours, sounds silly, they're working such and such hours, but that means deliveries can't be made before 7 a.m. Right. A truck needs to know right. that, a deliverer needs to truck know. Can't roll at 5 they can't, they'd have to wait somewhere they else. Right. and mm -hmm. not enter the premises until yep. the designated time yep. and likewise on the other end yep. and that's important yep. um, can't enter before seven mm. this is for the abutters well for the town too. Yeah, I mean, in general yeah. in general but yes yeah. so it's not to, it's for, uh, like for the village market the same way yeah. 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 I see oh, yeah. Yeah. and it's well, still a residential any construction in town yeah. Yeah. even right. a single right. unit well, yeah. In you can't have any yeah. workmen come to yeah. your right. start before right. eight, I think, right. seven or eight, yeah. yeah. Seven. So, um, so that's about it in, until tomorrow, and I, I assume things will become a little bit more detailed um, in terms of steps. So we don't have the steps yet other than knowing that abatement will happen first and demolition of the ceiling will happen you know, after that's completed and the actual demolition, you know, the destruction of the building really is probably only a week or two, but the overall abatement and demolition phase is six or seven weeks. So looking at that and realizing that having sort of that piece of it, you know, now it does feel like we're in March before there's any real Yeah, I mean initially they thought they were gonna have that all done by end of January. Mm. But, uh, that's what I I, I I know that's what I'm I mean, I mean they somebody said that too. Like we expect to be demolished by the end of January. Well, well what construction you better be abating that building. Have you ever been involved? Yes. yes. It's always the same thing. Well, they've got a contractual. They do. Commitment. But when do, when so. do they actually? When do we consider January third? January. The clock third. started ticking. Clock started. It did. Yeah. They signed oh, the contract. Okay. And then, so. So it so is so significant, so. but I guess you know, as, as Karen maybe intimated, the preliminary work is important. It seems like Venusia, but it would set, I guess, the stage for mm -hmm. the rest of the mm -hmm. schedule. So mm -hmm. to get it right is good, but I do hope they just don't get um, you know, way Is there a full foundation going? Foundation. There's no basement. Okay. No basement. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that affects the foundation. Well, I mean, no, there's no basement. It's it's a big pad. It's a big slab. Well, I don't consider that. That's a slab. That's a slab. So as far as age friendly goes, you know, there's been nothing and I was going to elaborate more in December and Caitlin was there, but then we were rushed at the end, so now I, I had thought Caitlin would be here to sort of um, elaborate a little bit more for me, but just to keep you in the loop. As far as what we've been trying to do, we had an unfortunately just busy time over the fall. And it's hard to get the committee together. And now we've lost our planning and development director, mm -hmm. who was very helpful and valuable on the committee. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. And Mark Fenton, who's also helped us out, he's, he's tough to, to get. Um, Caitlin, of course, is spearheading for UMass action town communities who are going through this process and paying UMass to help facilitate. 
we're not. <laughs> we're trying to do it ourselves and utilize her expertise. Um, however, I am scheduling a meeting for next Wednesday at 6 o'clock here, you know, for maybe an hour, hour and a half, um, because we left off trying to make a list of groups places, people who already exist that representatives from the committee or even maybe the board, if you'd like to be involved, would be able to just speak to and solicit input regarding the survey questions we put out there or just generally educate them and garner some input from them, some suggestions, some recommendations, some thoughts on, um, you know, what's great about living in situ as an older person, what uh, suggestions they might have for improvements for all ages and there's a third question I can't remember but my postcards are here so I gave everybody a wristband this is you know this is a little bit of our connection situate senior center on one side and live well situate on the other so it's just something that maybe as we do start to visit people and honestly I'll do it here at the senior center as well uh, you know our knitting group I can sit down and, and talk with them and really get their input our writing groups our, um, anytime there's a gathering mm -hmm. that's informal, mm -hmm. then I think I will start with that. And out of that may come, and I haven't included it on the survey because it's more specific to us, but as I mentioned last meeting, just the idea of, do you mind the term senior center? Do you have some other idea that um, adult center of some sort would work for right. you? You know, Barnstable Adult <laughs> Center is what they did. Others, um, and Plymouth has some other. Yeah. Center for Active Living. Yeah. yeah. Which, oh, that's very nice. Yeah. No. 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 Well, <laughs> personally, I don't. I don't mean to. Yeah. I, I think it sounds like a, a different kind of a facility. Oh well, that's. I don't think of a gym. I think of an assisted living facility. So. Oh. Maybe it's yeah. the word living. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's the word living. Yeah. So there's certain words. There's, there's very few sure. words that are really used consistently. And center is one. Adult is another. Senior is still used. You know, more than people might be implying right now because it really still works. And it's fine mm -hmm. if we don't change it. It's just something that I think we have an opportunity to yeah. air and discuss. Yeah. And so we should because I think we have a responsibility maybe to, mm -hmm. to discuss it. Yeah. So that's all. I also feel that... Um, it's not being a senior is not a dirty work. It's well, not. It's not. <laughs> well, but it also, I think, in, in this sort of has come out like from being, you know, getting the 50 plus program in, you know, going, is that there were so many people that are in the 50 yeah. plus, 50 something and even 60 something demographic mm -hmm. that are participating in the program that have never stepped foot inside of a senior center before and probably never would have. Mm -hmm. And that's but for the program. But for the program, yeah. which so that's one of the value propositions of hosting the program is that you're getting people in. But for the greater good of trying to make this new senior center, um, you know, uh, a driver yeah, for, for yeah for for healthy living for the greater community and trying to draw in a broader mm -hmm. demographic. That, you know, a lot of people that come to the program were like really reluctant to come because it was, they didn't want to go to a council on aging. That's one side of the argument, but there is yeah. another side. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I think council on aging, mm -hmm. it, it may, be, may be very focused. Yeah. Whereas I think senior, senior living, <laughs> Senior or just adult. There's some words that were like even the age friendly uh, subcommittee, you know, they were steering committee, sorry. Um, they they didn't want the word age or aging as, as part of the focus because it just sometimes it has other connotation. So that's where live well sort of came to begin instead of age well or I guess I'm sensitive to ageism and mm -hmm. I don't care for it. And I think <laughs> sometimes, you know, you have to be yeah. boldly proud of you. You have to boldly yeah. And many yeah. people are, and that's the other side of the argument, is that it's more to convince those who are perhaps turned off a little bit that this is this is great, this is fine, and it's really just a word. Mm -hmm. But Well, I mean, and I agree. I mean, I think just even changing from, from uh, Council on Aging to Senior Center yeah. is... Yes. But I have to tell you, because I know Donna 
Burns and Madeline yeah. from Barnesville who yeah. hosted the 50 plus program for four years yeah. and the reason why they stopped is because they were doing this major yeah. you know rebranding yeah. and they worked on I, that's I'm, I'm like I can't even speak because they worked on this for like two years yeah. and now you're telling me that yeah. that's what they came up with is Barnesville Adult, Adult Center, Center. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really pretty funny well, a new logo. They have a new yeah, logo. Yeah. They have they, you know, they, yeah, it's so a, it's a whole, whole rebranding. A lot of the a lot of the COAs are, are starting mm -hmm. to yeah. do. Yeah, many are. Which would be very good. Mm. Yeah, and like yeah. you say, that you want to talk to the people who call the come to the programs mm -hmm. here. But from what I understand, the programs are almost all the day time, aren't they? Most. So we're talking to people who are not working. Anymore. Yes. And so uh, I would also some be interested work. in the yes. people who are still working or looking for work. Well, that's part of what the committee would do also, yeah. is go to churches and yeah. you know, other that areas that they important. have access to. Yeah. And that's been yeah. important. Um, yeah. so we are still working on that. And also, I would like to put together a simple survey or the same survey and get it online so that you know the link could appear on Facebook or other media and people could easily complete that and hopefully we need to give this like a three, four, five month um and this campaign. would provide direction to like programming it's the action plan. Well the action plan for the age friendly status in us, yeah. I'm sure. Um, and ultimately to benefit we'll clean them. all of that. Yeah. So um okay. that's simply what I wanted to say. Sorry about that. So Kathy's report um mm -hmm. let's go back to one yes. Oh, yes. and it's the project sign. Uh, oh, sure. Is that is that something that they're going to be looking for some, for you something for you to speak to? And um, I may find out tomorrow. All I you know it came up, and I don't think recreation should be good before seeing. That, you know what? That's exactly why I said it or. <laughs> it, it is, but I, I don't know if you would have an opinion. So yes, thank you for saying you have an opinion, because it it is the. The bigger part of the yeah. project, I just didn't know. I, I just yeah, the I senior know. center is the larger part of yes. this project. It is. Yeah. That's what I meant. And we yeah. are the ones who got the money at the town meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I okay. think that should come. First. Excellent. I'm very happy with that. And it is a lot of words in the only. So if there's any way we could, you know, accept that community is nice. Campus has been has been made very public. So I don't think we can abandon that word now. And you know, so like it or not. So I'm not sure, but maybe they'll tell me too many it words. It seems to cause more mm -hmm. uh, consternation than anything else. Yeah. Why? It, it does. Why? Why? It's why it's the kind of campus. Campus. Yeah. 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 Why? Well, I don't know why it does seem to though. The campaign. It does seem. To, it does seem a very negative. Uh, it's a senior center action investigation yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. 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 Where's the campus? There's no campus. Oh, there's just one building instead of a campus. Oh, okay. okay. Well, it was part of the effort to, I think, uh, not educate the community, make, raise awareness in the community that this site and the product that we end mm -hmm. up with is going to serve the whole community and hopefully create a mm -hmm. campus right. setting where a lot is happening for all ages, yeah. really, even though the senior center is the senior center. You know, and the gym's the gym and the recreation department's up there. You know, you, you can... I'm sure this will be but, just a kick up for the rec department yeah. to be able to... I wouldn't be surprised to see that gate that school come down. But anyway, I did, you know, once the conversation was being had, I did ask could I have some input on the title because I wanted it to be right. So I did want to get yeah. your input. So okay. 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 Um, all right, so sorry to have taken up mm -hmm. time. But um, so I already talked a little bit about transportation. I don't need to belabor it. Um, here she's just giving numbers, slight decrease in numbers, obviously, it's Christmas and, you know, midweek, so, so some things were not happening the way they usually do. Um, still a fair number of rides and also a lot of... A lot of cancellations. Cancellations are a pain and yeah. that could be a lot of... Um, so the link, when they say link rides, that are the out-of-town rides, and the map rides are the medical access it's the medical access program through Title 3D that is funded through through social welfare services in the state. So we can select certain riders that we know are less at, less able to financially um, support the rides, and this is a cheaper um, option. 
even though even though social community action council does the rights. <laughs> it's just that the money's coming from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So just so you know that. Um, and Kathy did start, or they have started these shop hops. So they're doing a little bit more destination um, supermarket shopping, <laughs> which is fun. And even around Christmas time, you know, they went to the Christmas tree shop. Um, they did a couple of other extras, Marshalls, Ocean State. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. They gave them some opportunity, yeah. which is yeah. nice. And yeah. actually, I would say they were probably full at 12, 12 or 14. Um, we did do the lunch in the Situate Police Luncheon, which is a Saturday, so we did do that. Um, they did a trip to Wellspring, which is in Hull, and actually went to lunch at the Ferret. Okay. But, um, you know, Wellspring is, it's another social service yep. organization in Hull, nonprofit, mm -hmm. but they have a thrift yep. store, and it was a nice trip. They yep. did enjoy it. There was only a handful, maybe six people went. It was nice. Yeah. So for um, outreach, Jenny, um, so just to talk a little, or try to talk a little bit about her numbers, because it's a little complicated, I suppose. So advocacy, um, when she says, you know, number of service interactions, actually it looks like 62, not 72, one of, the, one of her numbers is wrong. Um, four, 43 seniors, okay, so, and and it's also in 47 different categories. It's just, it's a little bit mind-boggling, but she could have one, um, one individual who has yeah, three we, different we needs, so the interactions yeah. are yeah. multiple, yeah. Sure. Um, and, for, <clears throat> and for various reasons. Yeah. So, you know, her advocacy could be fuel assistance. Someone was denied fuel assistance, yeah. so she encouraged them to appeal and had to take a look at their paperwork and see where maybe they didn't include or, or weren't as as accurate or forthcoming and um, so that's time consuming housing applications which are now online um, so it's a portal for all state housing authorities you need an email and a username in order to be placed on there so she's had to work with a couple of people to just get, get them you know to get on the computer because they didn't have that so that's time consuming as well something else um, that is a little bit of an unmet need for us so she's spoken to them again but there's a program called launch and it um, employs so to speak special needs adults young adults who can go out in the community and do some simple work so uh, sometimes they do landscaping um, they've done some air conditioning units taking them out putting them in we get calls all the time for that and there's just no one to do it unless we have a volunteer to send right. but launch is a nice program for it. It continues to be an unmet need because they can't do everything, do you know what I mean? And they also do it for other towns, so we get a little of them. Um, and Jenny did meet with Donald uh, Knapp, who's our BSO this month, and did talk to him about um, an increase for veterans receiving aid and attendance. So that was something, a new term for me, I didn't fully understand, but it's, um, for veterans with disabilities yeah. that they get home care services. So that's exactly what, what we're talking about. Yep. It's one of the things that they can put yep. in. And as well for Chapter 115, <coughs> which is something else for low-income veterans. Um, so, you know, we do try to be reciprocal with Don if he has a need or doesn't know someone and we can help or vice versa. Um, the 50-plus networking group, you know, like I said. So can I ask, mm -hmm. just off, you, you may not know this. Do some of the, do some of these numbers, how, what percentage of these numbers might come out of the weekly or the monthly meetings at, at various housing levels? Or are they mostly here? They're mostly here. Okay. They're mostly drop-ins or okay. phone calls. Um, she does do home visits. Some people don't come here and she will go to them. Okay. And needs to for, you know, a good handful of clients. Uh, and then there's the housing authorities. And I mean, I think maybe she's been doing this now for probably two years, yeah. so I think it's better that, that she will have some um, visits from people in the corner. Room. Yeah, I mean, I think her going to Lincoln and Wheeler is very positive. Mm -hmm. it I just don't know how many people are coming up to, to visit with mm -hmm. her or talk to her when she's there. And she's actually spent some time with even Kathy who's the director for the housing authority because she's been short-staffed, so she's spent some time okay. you know, helping her out if she could um, with clients that may need some one-on-one. -on -one. And, and secondly, is the launch program 
sort of a voluntary um, hands-on type of thing. And, and I guess what I'm getting at is that we've got a quarry, right? They get paid. Well, we have the quarry. No, they hire them. Who hires them? <coughs> the end user hires yeah. the volunteer? Okay, directly. It's not a volunteer. The end user hires this person. Yeah. But we're referring that person. But it's at a much less cost than, than a private, corporate, yeah, but we're referring. Are we referring that person? In which case, we need to query that that individual or not? No. Okay. No okay. <coughs> I'm not sure. I thought that it's was always higher. a sticking point. It's not a higher. Higher. Not in okay. Maybe that's why. Be sure they get paid. But okay. We're not really facilitating. We're giving them a phone number. Okay. And they and they're making a, they're them. making a private. Business. We inform, we're informing them it's a resource. Yeah, I get it. So can I just ask a question about the, the 50 plus because, I mean, she's at all the meetings. I mean, she's interacting with a lot of people. So I guess, you know, what is this, you know, it, it says she only did a service interaction with four people. I guess I'm questioning. That That's seems. just in terms of her job otherwise just in terms of having any one-on-one -on -one where she's discussing some sort of need, benefit. In other words, so this would be like only people that yeah. would come to her where yeah. she might tell right. them about the 50 plus program as, you know, in terms of in, a, a way to find employment, not to be confused with all the people she interacts with at the meeting she goes right. to. The meeting is the meeting, and that's a separate I see. Okay. That she's doing. I mean, that's, that's extra. Okay. She spends those hours, but also does the email follow up. Does the email yeah? No, that's why I, you know. I mean, I just I wasn't quite sure what email or phone follow up. I would say. We had we had a good half dozen calls for the first meeting for January. Then. So would, if she, if she's fielding those calls, would that be considered to be part of her numbers? I don't think that she. Did. Well, actually, she. That's what I'm questioning. Four. Why? Why? You know, she should. Number of categories. Yeah, that's probably. Yeah. If she's not, she should. Just to try. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll I know how much that. work she does. I yeah. wondered that myself, and then I didn't. Know. numbers and again you know, it was December we did have a nice Christmas luncheon and that had been sponsored by Life Care so actually that was very nice um, we didn't, you know, we didn't um, have to charge which was great we supplied a nice a lunch from um, from a local caterer and we did have entertainment that in the end I did pay for a um, nominal amount we did have the ukulele players <laughs> Was anybody here? Are you here, Tom? No, I do meals on wheels that day. Okay. Don't tie up till 1.30. All right. I don't know. We were great. Um, we <laughs> did have people donate, so we still have a few poinsettias that haven't died yet, but people donated money so that we could fill our poinsettia tree. So that was very nice, and Mrs. mentioned that in her report. The Zeal Dance Studio um, came on a Friday afternoon. Their students came to decorate for Christmas for us. So they had put up the tree, decorated the tree, put stuff all around, and that was actually very nice. Um, so certainly we are happy that the community does seem to be supporting us. Very nice. And, and even the program we had today came to us through a men's group that's not related to the Senior Center, but had thought this would be a nice program for us. So they approached the speaker, wanted a place that they could come to and, and participate, and a lot of them don't. They don't come to our regular men's breakfast, so they were here. Some of them brought their wives. So it was actually nice. So some new faces and a couple of people who said they'd be back. Okay. Um, and yes, and after today, believe me, when I talk, I talked about my budget last week and the need for a kitchen, you know, a kitchen person who's you know consistent and knows where the spatula is, and I mean that we have a spatula because I thought we did and couldn't find it. So when I need to. It's just, it, it's a lot. It's hard to make pancakes with a little spatula. Yeah. <laughs> so is that something that you could try to get somebody, um, you know, maybe? I have some. I do have oh. that, but that's not a, that's not a, 
consistent person. I, I mean, as yet. But she does do that now. And, and much more, frankly, and much more. So she's way more than 100 hours probably for us. Over this last year, sure. Where can we go to? Um, okay. That's why we got the uh, dishwasher fixed. So we, can use the we didn't get the dishwasher fixed yet. Um, we had to have the, the fixed, fix, but we couldn't use the kitchen. My dishwasher is Two years ago. Right? Um, well, it's partially fixed. Okay. Can so I have something? It uh, includes through the health department. I did not mention that it's in the report, but uh, we had a few people come in that okay. they did some training. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm And can I just, um, just, JD's here, and Susan, me, and Janice, um, Leslie, Janice, Janice, I know, and Leslie, but missing. And Joan Powers isn't here. No, no, she left. Left. Right. Oh, she's liaison. So then the Lucille is not here. Lucille, Lucille is, is not, not here. Henry, and Henry, and Kate, and Kate, and Kate, and Kate, and Kate, Kate, and Kate, Kate, and 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 yeah, yeah. I'll find that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I just want to ask, can you send me last month's report? Because I'll, then I'll use the outline. I'll try. I have it. I have a couple. I mean, I'll take it. I'll, I'll send you. I can send you the last few if you'd like. Yeah, I'll follow the outline. <laughs> Anybody have any questions for Melinda on all this stuff? Okay. Uh, well, Karen's already come and gone. Uh, Joan, what's going on with social work services? Oh, they had the meeting uh, on Tuesday the 7th this week. Uh, they always spend a lot of time on the financial report, and they're still continuing to grow. Um, they're looking at a new facility because of where we are now is not big enough. Oh, they've outgrown that brain tree building? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's ongoing training because there's a lot of increase in management. And one of the new positions is a uh, supervisor of consumer re relations. And it's a full time. Mainly, uh, they oversee the customer services involved in complaints resolutions by working with departments responsible for management and complaints. Well, that's a whole little position that they have. Do you have copies of that? What? Do you have copies of that? No, but if Linda wants to make a copy for you, you can. The reason why I say that everything is, they do. Mm -hmm. Right. The reason why I say that is because that's something that, for example, Debbie mm -hmm. could make people that come to the post job seekers. We, we post jobs, and we make the people that come mm -hmm. aware of the jobs. I mean, everybody that's out there, because we this is there. a new position. It's open. I mean, yeah. it, they they hired someone already. Oh, 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 they were, oh I no, see. No, this is someone they hired already. They filled oh, the position. Okay. Okay. That was an open position. Yeah. Okay. They start already. And then, um, Trio T R I O is a new company that's taken over all the all the um, caterers of Meals on Wheels. Oh, that was all the South Shore. Mm -hmm. The the caterers aren't going to change. Mm -hmm. But this is one company that's just that's going to coordinate. So Lynn Lee, for instance, well, who I it think is, supplies. We still have the same meal, but it'll be different. They're already wearing, wearing their logo. Oh. <laughs> the driver came. We said, "What's that all about?" <laughs> he told us, you know, it's, a, it's just a it's a French company. Mm -hmm. It's just overseeing all of them. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to change. Thank goodness, because we're very happy with them. And then. Uh, they, they sent out, this is a memorandum of understanding between the members of the Elder Care Network Southeast, which considers all the South Shore elderly in this area. 
And um, it, what it is, it's mainly is, is an agreement intended to express the intentions of each member to provide to the other members in any kind of emergency situation. Which is, in fact, they had an emergency situation today because they had a big um, warning break um, and the facility had to close. Mm -hmm. But it's just a, a way that they all work together. Mm -hmm. So it might be, you know, one area has a problem, so the others are going to mm -hmm. fill in and help them. So that's just an agreement that they had. And then they gave us this huge booklet, and this is our cooperation plan for South Shore Elders. So any, any kind of emergency you can think of. That's the whole plan. They give us every year. They, they come up with us. a whole mm -hmm. big plan. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, locally we're doing good meals on, meals on wheels. We've got some new drivers. Okay. But we need more help in the kitchens. Oh. We have, that's what they needed. And actually on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it, they're only there from like 9 o'clock until 11. Mm -hmm. But like on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, which I'm well, is, is from 9 o'clock to 1.30. Yeah. Well, I have, you know, leave, I guess, through the town to uh, refer a some tax work off candidates' placements to social welfare services to become drivers. I just haven't identified those people yet that might want to do it. And most of them are seniors that yeah. we have. Most of them who drive. Yeah. And that's why in the, win the winter it gets tough because they go to Florida. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of water in Florida. I haven't done that yet, I don't know, but I guess if we can do one, we can do the other, but I just haven't identified who might want to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and then our, finding our own. Trinity dinner is going to be uh, January 26th, and it's going to be American chop suey, green beans, salad and rolls, and cake and ice cream, and it's going to be honoring Karen Stone, who was one of the leaders with me with starting and getting the community dinner going, which has been like 12, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. But she has health problems, so we're kind of, oh, wow. she kind of was heading everything in the kitchen, which yeah. I think is the, the hot pot. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of honoring her. I see. That's uh, January 26th. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you, John. Name. Oh, and I, I did give the council, I did give uh, one of the calendars uh, to the COA of the South Shirley Service. Oh, God. <laughs> and it presented it to her at the board meeting. So I got a big check out. Did she look at all the months? <laughs> she was looking. The one she held up was <laughs> St. Patrick's. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. that's a big hit, that one. <laughs> but yeah, they got to think of Maybe she'll help sell some. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Well, yes, they still have some. They do. They are still selling them. So um, it's a segue to campus community, but I don't have any report. All I can tell you, and I can um, between Foss and I guess the capital committee, um, Foss is sort of on a little bit of a hiatus for a couple of months, and I think the next thing they have scheduled is their spaghetti dinner in April. Mm -hmm. But also in April, um, now on April 26th, which is a Sunday and it's an evening, maybe an early evening fundraiser, a big gala fundraiser um, with one or two bands, and I believe they're planning it as a prom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what she was talking about, like prom. prom. prom yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the band is good that they're, they're really targeting. Club, they may right? have two in it. So um, there was no discussion on ticket prices yet, but I think that we hired there was some discussion about you know how to do auction items, if any, and um, how to you know, basically how to raise money as part of the event. Well, they're going to have probably get a glitch in their fundraising with the new rule, the new retirement law change that required distributions now. Pushed it up to seventy-two. Yeah. What is this? Instead of 70? Instead of 70 and a half. Oh, because they did send out a letter to all, well, did, was that in place at least through the no. previous year? Yeah, Last it, year, just No, it just, just took up. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, now it's so in other words, the so people that are, are that already, already did it, they're fine. You have to keep on doing it. I think 
they take that out, that's what I mean. Do you know what I mean? So now they change the 72 is broken. Yeah, but if you did it at 7 and a half, then you don't have to do it again until 72. 72, so you skip. Is that good? It's a good thing. Yeah. No, it's not a good thing because my financial advisor already did my distribution for this year. Yeah. Well, that's, this that's year right. doesn't change. Yeah, this yeah, year doesn't change. Next year changes. Yeah. Tax law 2019 does not change. Right. right. The, yeah. But this what was did, for, oh, for 2020? 2020. Oh. No, I did it, yeah. Oh, in January? Well, you kind of done it already. Really? Mm -hmm. Doesn't he have a new tax law? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to call him tomorrow. <laughs> so I guess it's too late. <laughs> Okay, so, I yeah, mean, Foss I, I is... About it. No, it's Ken Barrett. Yeah. Quiet. Quiet. So, like, how, 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 we, how did you... Well, yeah, no, no, anyway. I mean, they'll, they'll help with the, it. you know, capital. Yeah, how did I find out about it? I saw some thing, some, some piece little of mail thing. that I got. Yeah, I saw that, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so they'll need to send a new letter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to discuss age-friendly? Live well? Oh, I feel like I did, actually. Yeah, oh, you did, too? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone, then, does anyone else have any other agenda items to discuss? Okay. Very quiet. Mm. Uh, do we... Um, boss is late in the last newsletter I got. Mm -hmm. Um, two of the officers of boss are not running for re-election, so mm -hmm. okay. there'll, be, there'll be positions open there. There are positions, either co-chair positions yeah. for the friends, co-chair or uh, you know, president and vice president. Yeah. Oh, okay. As of October, I believe, and yeah. they'll... Next year, but... Mm -hmm. That is, um, so that is something for people to start thinking about, not you guys. <laughs> okay. Didn't know that. Uh, well, we can close it up. Does, do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Very good. Thank you all for coming. Next. All month. in favor? All in favor? Next yeah. month we are February 13th. 13th. Okay. Day before Valentine's Day. Okay. That's right. You'll be with for the whole month.